So this is class 162 on the Golden Doves. We're on the very bottom of page 90, top of page 91. We were discussing how, because it was necessary to study the Halachot Be'al Peh, because Torah Shel Be'al Peh, by definition, needs to be transmitted Be'al Peh from teacher to student. So there was a necessity on the part of this teacher to know it by heart so you can transmit it to the student. Necessity on the part of the student to learn it by heart so you can receive it from the teacher. So <coughs> given this, this affected the language, the style of the halachot, of the mishnayot. So here goes an example for, um, um, one should always teach his students in a concise way. Derech kesara, advise the rabbis because of that, because obviously if it's too long, if there's too much information, uh, too many words rather, if you're verbose, as I'm being now, <laughs> uh, you wouldn't be able to study it by heart, right? For the sake of illustration, let us consider the case where the Talmud Bhavatra discusses the procedure to be followed when three experts designated by the court to assess the estate of orphans fail to reach an agreement. So, okay, we're trying to assess the value of the estate of orphans. So we're going to have the, uh, give the estate to a trustee, for example, and we want to know what is the value of the assets. So let's say this, um, a, an assessment is made, but there's a, there's a dispute between the assessors. Our rabbis taught, in the case in which three experts went down to the estate of male orphans to assess it, if one values the estate at a mané, mané is a hundred dinarim, one at twenty at twenty. So, so let me let me just read to you the way it says. One values the estate at a mané. Mane, we know, is 100 dinarim. One at 20, just says 20, and one at 30. Right? It doesn't say 20 mane, 30 mane. It just says one at a mane, one at 20, one at 30. It is to be judged at a mane. Now, okay, so you have this um, dispute as to the value of the estate. One assessor says it's worth a mane. The other one, it says it's worth 20. The other one says it's worth... 30, then we go according to the one who says it's worth the money, which is an in-between number. It is to be a judge at 90 dinarim. At 90, it just says 90. Right? So we have four numbers here. First assessor says money. Second assessor says 20, whatever 20 means. Third assessor says 30. It comes to Bil Ezebed to be Sadok and says, oh, right, so la lacha is we assess it at a mané. The Bilezim and says, no, we assess it at 90. Now there's some confusion as to what these numbers mean. The traditional explanation of this passage is that the first number, mané, 100, mané means mea, right? Refers to the coin dinar. So there, the 100, the mané, refers to 100 dinarim. Whereas the other two numbers, then we have the, remember, the second assessor said 20. It wasn't talking about 20 dinarim. It refers to 20 sela. Um, uh, each sela has four dinarim in it. So 20 sela would be 80. So the first opinion was 100 dinarim. The second opinion was 20. And now we understand that 20 means 20 sela, which is 80 dinarim. The opinion favoring the settle, oh, and then you had the um, the third opinion, which said thirty. So thirty selaim would be a hundred twenty dinarim, right? And now you see why they choose a hundred, right? One says eighty, one says a hundred, one says one twenty. We do it at a hundred for whatever reason. It be as if it be says ninety. Now when he says ninety, he's not talking about selaim; he's talking about dinarim. So there's a lot of confusion. This is a very confusing way to phrase the halakha. You keep switching from currencies, you know. One person says 100, he's referring to $100. The other person says uh, 20, he's referring to, I don't know, 20 francs. A third person says um, 30, he's also referring to francs. The fourth person, uh, um, when he says the number 90, he's referring back to dollars. So very confusing, right? Although the Tamil discussion is perfectly clear at the conceptual level, so we understand how you do it, you average out. Uh, it presents, right, so the value is the average value. 
But still, at the linguistic level, it's very difficult. What is the rationale for expressing the sums in two different coinages? Dinarim, Selaim. The problem was examined by Bishem Wael, CDEO. And here it goes. If you ask, why did the Tana, the formulator of the Tanaic literature, begin with Dinarim and continue with Selaim? How would you justify that? He should either have expressed the values in Selaim, right? And said that the first is assessing assessing it at 25 Selaim. So instead of saying the first assessor says the Mane, he could have said 25 Selaim. And then we know the second one says 20, it's 20 Selaim. And the third one he says um, 30, it's 30 Selaim. Doesn't do that. Right? Or he should have expressed the sums in Dinarim and say 80. 100, 120, right? So the first one is money, that's 100 dinarim. The second one should have said 80, and the third one should have said 120, and we understand it's dinarim. Doesn't do that. The answer to this is that the Tana opts to use a shorter expression because we want to use, we, we want to try to use a minimum number of words, right? Even at the expense of clarity, which is pretty remarkable. If he had used the laim, he would have had to say esrim v'chamisha, esrim v'chamisha selaim, and said just mane. So the mane, two uh, syllables, esrim v'chamisha, six syllables. However, by referring to dinarim, he could use a single word mane. If he had continued, so you say, okay, continue. So if you're going to use dinarim, be consistent. Continue using the word, the measurement of dinarim. Then he would have had to express the last sum in two words, me'ave esrim. Because in that case, the third opinion, which um, was sheloshim, it's longer, it's shorter rather than me'ave esrim. Only... Uh, rather, five syllables versus sheloshim, three syllables, right? So that's why he switches. He's always switching so he can use less syllables and make the language more condensed. Right. This will teach you the great desire of the Tana, says Rabbi Shemar Sedilio, to express himself concisely to the point that he would rather use a single term, although the idea would not be perfectly clear than to use two words and thus make the idea clear, right? It's an amazing, amazing passage from the Bishop Sedillo. This may serve as a paradigm for the need and function of commentaries to assist in the proper understanding of the ideas expressed in Tabloid literature. And this is why we really need the Gemara, oftentimes, has to explain to us what the meaning of the Baraita is, what the meaning of the Mishnah is, because the Mishnah was formulated in a very dense fashion. So we need the instruction of the Gemara to tell us what is the intention of these particular passages or uh, words.